of separation. It's a hole inside of us that can't be filled, and, but we try. We try to stuff everything in there that we can get our hands on. We try to put people in there. We try, we try to get everything inside, but it never fills all because, this is what my friend Ron said many years ago, it's a God-shaped hole and only God fits in there. So to be filled with spirit then. This would be, this would be the goal, to be filled with spirit. Not to try to fill up with other things. And this is the thing that happens is when we are fulfilled, when we are filled with spirit, then we act in a way that brings all good things to us that we have need of. And, that's, and then that's just a bonus. It's just a bonus that, that, that occurs. And uh, then looking you know, a little bit closer, I find that I have this thing called inertia. Inertia is a physical law, by the way. You know it. You've heard it many times. Inertia is this physical law that says a body in motion tends to stay in motion and a body at rest tends to stay at rest. And it goes on to say, unless acted upon by a greater force. But, so this is just a physical law. And that's why when you roll something across the floor, eventually it stops. It hits a wall. It hits friction. I mean, that's how it, it stops. If we took away... All of those things, it wouldn't. It would just keep on. It would just keep on going forever. If you took away friction, if you took away gravity, if you took away a wall that it's going to run into, it would just keep rolling forever because that's the law. Now, as far as in our lives, how this manifests itself is that we will get frantic if we are not prioritizing. If we don't have things in order, we get fr we go out in the world and do all sorts of things. We got all sorts of projects. We got all. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I have all these things, this and this and this, and all these things have to be done. And it's just distractions. Right? But we'll just keep doing it. And then, then eventually, we run out of gas, and we crash, and then we're on the couch, and we don't move. Sometimes inertia happens because we are paralyzed with fear. We don't want to do the next thing. We don't want to do the the thing that is called for because fear is telling us either it's not going to turn out right or it's too much or whatever it is, but we can't, we can't move. So prioritizing things, the opposite of this is right action. I'll put it another way. The opposite of inertia is proper service. So let me put it into context. Proper service means doing the right thing for the right reason, and we've added at the right time. Right thing for the right reason at the right time. So as far as activity goes, when I'm in my manic activity phase, proper service would mean that I'm only doing the things that are important. I'm only do I am actually putting first things first. I'm doing what's really important. I'm not just keeping myself busy because you know what? There's going to be a whole pile of work, meaningful work, things that need to be done sitting in front of me, but I could be playing video games. I mean, look, I look very busy, right? I could be doing, I mean, I could be doing all sorts of things. I could be acting, I could be on the, I, I, whatever. Whatever it is, mindless activity, activity that doesn't have anything to do with, but proper service says, we do the right thing for the right reason at the right time. And then when we find ourselves glued to the couch, it applies the same way. Let me get it, move into action. Let me move into right action. <clears throat> vanity. This is the, one of the main things about uh, self-centeredness. Vanity is not thinking, it's really not having an inordinately high opinion of oneself. We think that that's, that's like in the, in, the, uh, in the dictionary, you'll find that that's one of the definitions. But really, in practice, that's not what it is. Vanity is actually having an inordinately low opinion of oneself and trying to act like we are something different than that, trying to put on something else. And so actually what it is is alternating. It's a judgment where we alternate, where we, where we, where we say I'm better than this one and I'm worse than that one. And, uh, and putting things in priority, humility. Humility is this like really simple thing. I know who I am. I don't have to act like something else. 
I know I, and the reason I know who I am is because I did this self-examination. And then I talked to somebody else about it. I know who I am. I don't have to act like anything else. And this is like, the, 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 when remember what they, we did in the meditation. At our core, we are pure and loving spirit. Now, that's who we really are. We are telling ourselves all day long in a million different ways that that's not true. But that's who we really are. We are pure and loving spirit. So just put it in that context and say, if I am just pure and loving spirit, why would I have to act like anything else? Why would I, why would I think it was attractive to act like anything more than that? But that's, that's where we're going. That's where we're headed. We're headed to the identification, to the realization that that's who we really are. Even though intellectually we're accepting it, we may feel a little bit better about it. But right now we've got a whole lot of other attributes about ourselves that we are holding on to as our identity. Even in those things, let us know what they are. Let us know what they are. Be open and honest about them and not try to act like something else. As we move on this journey to come into that full realization of who we really are. And the last one that I found in myself was this anger. And anger is just a, um, it's just a mask uh, over fear. But anger could be anything from a mild irritation that runs all the way through prejudice and judgment and goes, runs that gamut all the way to hate. And this is, um, this is just below the surface. You can think about our consciousness as being like a, like a river that has multiple currents running through it. And there's that surface thing that's happening, and then just below that surface, this is, this is uh, right below the veneer of civilization, right below the agreements that we have that we say we won't kill each other, runs this current of anger. And it's right there. You dip your toe into it every once in a while. Sometimes you immerse your entire body in it. But it's right there under the surface, and it, is, it, is, it comes directly from the fear that is the main problem, and that is separation from God. This anger comes directly from hell. It comes directly from, it actually comes directly from guilt. And the, by the way, just to talk about this guilt for a second, to put it into context, the, we, we, have, we have a bunch of guilt. We've got guilt for conscious guilt for stuff we think we did wrong. We have a list of things that we think we did wrong and we keep in our minds. And then we have guilt that's a little bit lower than that that actually comes from what, what Freud called the superego, which is, some people call it the race mind. And this is the guilt of all of the mores and rules and everything like that that have been put upon us and were put upon our parents and our grandparents and going back and back. And they're just kind of embedded in the social consciousness. And so we feel guilty about stuff that we, didn't, we don't even think about, but it still provides us with this guilt. But the ultimate guilt comes from the fact that we made a decision to separate. Now, this may be a, this may be a little bit too much, but a, a, after a while, you, you will, and considering the idea, you will see, because here's what we did. Sometime long before this body that we're inhabiting now, Long before our parents' bodies, long, long before any bodies, we made a decision to separate from God. And when we did that, we got this big guilt that was like the guilt of not just separating against God, but fighting against God, which in that craziness we, we considered unforgivable. So now we have, not only do we have guilt, but we have unforgivable guilt. And it's buried very deeply. And this guilt causes Fear, well, fear of punishment. We're guilty, over the, we're guilty over this ultimate crime that we have committed. We've separated from God. We fight against God. And, and so the fear comes and it shows itself as anger. It shows itself as anger. And, we, and we, you know, we try to hide it so much. But it comes out so easily. 
the little the guy that cuts us off on the on the street the, 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 somebody makes an off comment that we m even misinterpret they didn't even mean what what we thought we heard and we get get mad we may not say anything but the anger bubbles up inside of us it's that close putting things in priority forgiveness forgiveness <coughs> is the healing of anger and this is really where the rubber meets the road. Forgiveness is seeing it differently. Forgiveness is a miracle. By the way, a miracle is, is an event that cannot be explained by science. Okay, it is a change. I mean, this is just, this is what the dictionary says. It, it's over and above the physical world, so to speak. It's something that, that really has no scientific explanation. Or we could say we haven't found it yet. So, so this is, a miracle is forgiving anger. A miracle is seeing the situation differently than how we see it now. So we go back to the basic premise. Prioritization, putting first things first. I put God first. I put the unity of all life first. Forgiveness is seeing that I am not separate from that person that I'm angry with. Forgiveness is coming into a conscious awareness that they really didn't do anything to me. Remember, I'm talking about reality now. They may have done something to your body. They may have run into your car. They, they may have stole some of your stuff. But in reality, they didn't do anything to you. It, in spirit, in the reality of that we are all just pure and loving spirit. They didn't do anything. Where did they do it? They did, the only place that they did anything to you was in hell. In the hell of separation. Which we already established at the beginning can't even be real because if God is everywhere present, there can't be anywhere where God is not. So, you are upset and angry and fearful and, and all of these other things that we have just gone through in a place that doesn't even exist. That's enough. 